Backpacking. Quite frankly, it's the reason people come to Philmont. The opportunity to participate in a seven, nine, or 12 day trek has drawn more than a million scouts and scouters to the backcountry for more than 85 years. And all of this high adventure is made possible by the backpack. Today, we'll learn about the history of the backpack and take a look at several versions that can be found at the National Scouting Museum in this edition of Artifact of the Week. The need to carry items while walking has been around, well, since people have been walking. But there's very little physical evidence to show us how this was done. Many believe that people simply wrapped up their possessions and tied them to their bodies in whatever manner worked for them. Being able to carry things while keeping your hands free was important in case you needed to also carry a weapon or a shield. Or maybe you needed to be able to use your hands and arms to climb a tree or scale an obstacle. In terms of a formal method of carrying stuff, one of the earliest potential examples dates back to 3300 BC. Back in 1991, two Italian tourists found the mummified remains of the Atsi Iceman while hiking in the Alps. Among the artifacts they found with the remains included a U-shaped hazel rod about six feet in length and two wooden boards, each about 16 inches long. It's believed these were tied together and supported a bag or a wrap made of an animal hide to secure the person's belongings. There's also evidence from Scandinavia of wood being shaped and used to secure packages to the back of the wearer. In Norway, these are referred to as bags with a frame. Here in North America, we have examples of backboards used by Native Americans to transport children, food, and possessions, particularly by nomadic plains tribes. So knowing that humans figured out how to meet this need, let's look at a more formal approach to carrying stuff on your back. Prior to 1910, the term backpack never appeared in print. However, the term knapsack, based on the German word for food, has been in use since 1603. The term knapsack conjures up images of a bandana tied to a stick tossed over your shoulder. Your meals secured and handy as you walk from point to point. By the late 1800s, the term rucksack, based on the German for back, became the preferred nomenclature and implies the load was carried on your back, essentially a bag with shoulder straps. There were also haversacks, which were also bags made of cloth or leather with shoulder straps that were designed primarily for military use. Then in 1874, an American colonel, Henry C. Merriam, designed and patented a backpack for infantry soldiers. The backpack was supported by a metal frame and did not require straps. His hope for it to catch on outside of the military never happened, and his design soon came to an end. In 1909, Norwegian inventor Ole Bergens designed and patented a curved frame made of juniper and a soft canvas bag that transferred the weight from the wearer's shoulders to their hips. Later, Oli replaced the wooden frame with a light tubular steel frame, which was patented and became very popular. In 1920, Lloyd Nelson fashioned a backpack after the wood and seal skin bags inspired by the people he met while hiking in Alaska. Canvas bands were attached to a wooden frame on which he hung cloth bags with steel pins, making the bag easy to detach. This was known as the trapper bag, which went on to become one of the first mass produced bags in the world. The BSA paired the trapper-style backboard with a yucca-style pack to create one of the most iconic backpacks in BSA history. This combination served many Philmont trekkers during the 1940s and 50s. The next major innovation was in 1938 when Jerry Cunningham introduced the first bag with zippers. This improvement would allow the wearer to access their belongings easily. Ake Norden returned from a mountain trek in 1950 and built a canvas bag that was worn high on the waist and close to the back on a wooden frame with leather straps. He used his mother's sewing machine to make the prototype. And in 1952, what we know as the modern backpack was born when Dick and Nina Kelty used World War II surplus materials like aircraft aluminum and parachute material to craft their bags. These were the first truly lightweight backpacks and incorporated features such as contoured frames, waist straps, and padded shoulder straps. Greg Lowe is responsible for the first internal frame backpack. It was created in his garage in 1967, and his design created a pack flexible enough to contour to the body, but tough enough to carry a heavy load. He also shifted the weight to the hip belt and added side compression straps and a sternum strap for additional function and comfort. The first edition of the Boy Scout Handbook addresses hiking and overnight camping. Several things should be remembered when going on a hike. 
First, avoid long distances. A foot-weary, muscle-tired, and temper-tired hunger group of young boys is surely not desirable. There are lots of false notions about courage and bravery and grit that read well in print, but fail miserably in practice, and long hikes for boys is one of these notions. The handbook goes on to say, carry with you only the things absolutely needed, rolled in blankets, poncho army style. A couple of paragraphs later it addresses packs. The most practical and inexpensive pack is the one made for the Boy Scouts of America, price 60 cents. It is about 14 by 20 inches square and six inches thick, made of waterproof canvas with shoulder straps and will easily hold everything for a tramping trip. Here at the museum, we have several backpacks on display and it's fun to watch visitors come in and talk about their backpack or the design of a friend or relative that came to Philmont back in the day. For the record, my grandparents gave me the blue version of this backpack when I turned 11 and crossed over from Cub Scouts to Boy Scouts. One of my favorite backpacks on display is this woven pack basket design used to carry food and gear in the Adirondack Mountains or canoeing the waters of the Northern Woods. Now this particular backpack was used at the 1960 National Jamboree held in Colorado Springs. We also have packs such as these Haversack No. 573s, which saw use as official BSA products from 1925 through 1953. There are also packs such as these external frame packs from the 1960s, and this pack carries the patches and memories of many adventures of the Scout that carried it. While today's backpacks are direct descendants of those backpacks designed in the 1950s and 60s, they're lighter and more versatile than ever. Ripstop fabric and slash resistant materials make these bags more durable. Velcro and elastic cords create even more ways to attach and secure gear. Ergonomic shoulder straps, built-in hydration systems, and increased airflow technology make backpacks more comfortable than ever. And backpacks are even starting to embrace technology, with solar charging capabilities and electronics built into the backpack itself. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Join us again as we continue to learn more about the history of scouting through the artifacts found in the collection of the National Scouting Museum, Philmont Scout Ranch.